Howdy! It's Jim Arado, and this is September 2022. Currently, we are in Seward, Alaska. We're actually at the Harbor 360 Hotel, and it's about 4.30 in the morning. We heard a horn blow, and we looked out, and we actually saw the cruise ship that we would be getting on the next day, the Norwegian Jewel. Uh, we watched it pull in. How beautiful is that? Such a great view. I'll put up another video about Seward and the Harbor 360. I'll put up lots of videos about this cruise, but I wanted to put one up specifically about the ship and our time on the Norwegian Jewel. Yeah, just love that view. And check that out. Again, I gotta tip my hat to the Harbor 360. An incredible, nice hotel with just a, a great view on the back. Yeah, that's the Norwegian Jewel. We would be getting on it shortly. And there it is uh, that next morning. This, this was a great cruise, though. I've joked that it was about half a decade in the making. We started thinking about doing this cruise. We put our money down on it. And we planned on doing it in 2020. And then COVID came around. And the good people at Norwegian Cruises said, you know, we could give you your money back. Or let's postpone this a year. And we'll give you some, some perks. And we said, sure. 2021 comes around. COVID is still going on. And they said, hey, we'll give you even more perks if you don't want your money back. You know, go in 2022 and we'll really really show you a good time and we said that that sounds great so we got some free excursion credits and our room was upgraded quite a bit we actually they, they uh, when we got there they were calling us VIPs and I, I kind of liked that treatment we actually had a penthouse suite and I'll show that to you here shortly my wife's aunt and uncle did this cruise with us. This was our second cruise, and it was also our second cruise with them. And they are veterans at cruising, so uh, they really know how to do it. They were in the Haven, and I'll show you their room too. But around noon the next day, after the Norwegian um, after the Norwegian Jewel came into town, we uh, took our luggage and we went over to this big building next to the ship. There was a little process. We had to show them our COVID uh, status, vaccines, and you know, card, and and uh, that kind of thing. We had a little bit of paperwork to show them. This whole process, man, it took maybe 15 minutes. It was nothing. It was uh, very quick and easy, in my opinion. They they do take your picture for your ID card, even though our photo was not on our ID card. Uh, but but just this whole process was very very simple, and the people doing it were were pleasant too. It it was pretty painless, and I did not mind it at all. And of course they came out and were like, oh you guys are VIPs, and they kind of escorted us to our room and everything. It was very nice. And th this is a quick look at um, my wife's aunt and uncle's room in the Haven. It's nice and spacious. I mean, just a nice just a nice room. And there's kind of a living room area, then there's kind of a little bedroom, and then you go into the bathroom. And, yeah, there was kind of their bedroom area, which was very nice. And then uh, there's their shower, and, and and kind of a nice big shower, especially compared to some of the other rooms. And a couple windows there, too. How cool is that? Just, uh, just a lot of room to spread out. Had a big screen TV there, went out on the balcony. And this this was a very nice room, and they were very happy with it. Uh, you get you get a bowl of fruit, you get a little snack, and just another little shot of it. And that was looking out their balcony. It's another little ship there beside us, and we are, geez, I don't know, twelve, thirteen stories up at least. So it's uh, quite a view there, still in Seward. Again, a great town. I'll, I'll talk more about it later. And this was our room. They had a little bowl of fruit for us also. Uh, snacks. We, they, they brought us snacks every single night. These little uh, snacks on crackers. 
And a nice uh, cappuccino, espresso maker, wine glasses. Um, and here's our bathroom. Not quite as big as the other one, but uh, this, this was actually much bigger than the one we had on our last cruise. We were happy with it. It was, uh, yeah, for a cruise room, this, this was perfect. In fact, we liked our room more than my wife's aunt and uncle's room. We just liked the way it was laid out better, and we had a really good view. We were on the aft of the ship, and that that was just a great view. I'll put up some of those views later. And just a few more shots of in our room. Nice little table there. We had some of our stuff spread out there. Please ignore our junk. And it was great looking out that balcony window. There's our bed uh, during the night, and just uh, enjoying you know the the ocean right right beside our bed it was very very nice <laughs> yeah those guys were playing one of my favorite songs that's in oceans i believe is the name of it it's um it's on the boat. It's supposed to be kind of like the local bar and grill place. It was probably my least favorite restaurant on the ship. And by least favorite, I mean on a scale of 1 to 10, it was a solid 9. Uh, they had pretzel bites with cheese. I love that. Um, oh, some, some nice, uh, I think that was some Irish stew or something. It was really good. I enjoyed that quite a bit. Again, it was kind of a bar and grill place, and there's some really nice... Uh, places on the boat too. We we enjoyed this a lot. As you can tell, they had nice appetizers, nice food, uh, bar food, but uh, kind of kind of upscale bar food. And we uh, we ate here a couple times. They had some wings. Uh, wings were a little little by my standards, but I still enjoyed them. I would find out on the cruise. Oh yeah, and by the way, I wish people would quit toasting hot dog buns. That just doesn't seem right. I don't know. Is that a northern thing? It just doesn't uh, seem right to me. But yeah, they had... Yeah, you can see the food was great. I did notice, though, as a southerner, yeah, forget sweet tea and barbecue sauce. Uh, when, I, don't, I don't know if you go... Uh, once you go up into maybe northern Indiana and stuff, or once you get a little so far north, people are like, well, what do you want barbecue sauce for? And by the way, that was our view at night out of our room. Check that out. Yeah, you see what I'm talking about? That's wonderful. And then you could get up the next morning and go walk around the ship and see views like this. start the day and you could uh, you could walk you could walk around the entire ship you could make some rounds and one morning kind of before things got hopping I just walked around the ship to get a good look at uh, just some of the, the basic areas several little kind of nightclub areas you know places where you can just go and set relax all over the place and there's the elevators and the stairways and you know, of course you're here quite a bit going up and down all over the ship Oh, there's the, the Stardust Theater. They had the music and comedy acts there. Yeah, there's the captain and his crew leading the ship. They have a window where you can kind of look out and see what's going on there. I thought that was great. And then right by that window, they have sort of a museum dedicated to the ship. They've got all their awards and records and, and things of that nature here. And this, this was really fascinating. Just uh, checking that out. It's neat that they have them all displayed so you can go and get a sense of uh, of what the ship's done. The captain, by the way, and um, the chief engineer and the guy who was over kind of the hospitality part of the ship did a Q&A at one point on the ship, and that was a lot of fun. And they seem like likable guys, obviously smart fellas, and uh, I just I enjoyed going to that. They had a library on the ship. 
obviously it's small, but look how relaxing that is. And there were a couple of people there enjoying, yeah, just sitting there and reading in a library on a cruise ship. Very small, though. Uh, I, I usually pack a few books when I'm on a cruise. Of course, on this trip, I brought a couple of books on Alaska. There's a chapel. And here's uh, kind of, I don't know, some sort of a club. They had a little bar in the background. We would go here one afternoon, and I'll put up a little clip of this. There was a, a guitar-playing singer named Leo who did some songs on the ship, and we saw him do an Elton John set. And I think they also played bingo here quite a bit. You could just come and sit here if you wanted. Oh, and since, since we were in the penthouse suites, we had access every morning to have breakfast at Moderno. And this was a real special area. It was uh, fairly exclusive. As you can tell, it's not crowded. It's very relaxed. Uh, there, was, there was our view on several days. And they fed us well. In fact, I can honestly say some of the, the most wonderful breakfasts I've enjoyed in my life were, were here on this cruise. And, and here's a few pictures of some of the breakfasts we had. Uh, there's an omelet. And I personally enjoyed their eggs benedict and their steak and eggs. Probably more frequently than I should have. But you would order. You would say, okay, I'd like the eggs benef benedict. And they would say, oh, okay, you want potatoes with that? You want bacon? And, oh, yeah, they brought out the little French press coffee every morning for me, too. And, and they got to know us. Um, uh, Tuthu, Rico, Deepak, um, Kath, Catherine, um, Nelson. There were several staff members here that we, we, we hugged them on our last day. We loved them so much. They were great. And they kind of learned what we liked and sort of had stuff ready and waiting for us in a way. It was incredible. And look at that steak and eggs, by the way. And we really loved this. And uh, there was a special area for lunch also. A lot of the same staff worked lunch. Yeah, and here we are at that area. That's uh, that's Cagney's. And it was uh, kind of like breakfast. You could only have lunch there if, um, you know, you were a certain level on the ship. And it was... Uh, Again, quite a treat. There's there's a dessert I had maybe more than once. They had a great brownie. And my wife is really into uh, carrot cake. But uh, yeah, they, they, uh, they had great food too. We had some great soups. And yeah, just some incredible meals. It was the kind of place, I mean, I could have had steak every day for lunch. Um, which, which I thought about, but I didn't. But yeah, see how pretty it is? See how uncrowded it is? Just a great place, you know, if, um, yeah, it was kind of worth it. It would be worth it on a cruise to spend up a little bit so you could have access to a place like this that's just kind of calm and quiet. Really, really nice way to, to do a cruise. And here's here's just some other various pictures of, obviously, salad and uh, desserts and other things we had here. They had a prime rib sandwich that just uh, was unbelievable. Yeah, and again, there's just another view. We sat down to lunch, and again, just not crowded. There is, on um, on the Norwegian ships, There's um, they have like a big buffet area. And there was one day we barely, we were kind of in a hurry, and we went up and we just grabbed a salad from the buffet. Otherwise, we had breakfast um, and lunch in the little special areas that I've mentioned. But the buffet area, you know, it's, it's crowded. It's very, very crowded. And it was just nice to have this option. We would go up to the buffet area every evening and just have tea and coffee with, uh, it was me and my wife, her aunt and uncle. Uh, prime rib sandwich, that, uh, man, I'm craving that right now. It was just unbelievable. But, yeah, we went up there with them and... It was it was a nice area to be. This this might be from another restaurant. I can't remember. We had dinner one night at um, at Cagney's. I can't remember if the pictures I have here are from that night or not. But the food was just ah, look how colorful that is. What a great display. We we just all really enjoyed Cagney's and the staff and uh, yeah had a good time there. 
And in the, in the evenings, we did go to, to other restaurants, obviously, and I'll, I'll put up some pictures and videos of those. Um, this, this is probably going to be a long video of me just talking about the cruise kind of as I come along or come upon the videos. I'm going to put them in here, but I wanted to give just an honest view of what we did while we were on the cruise ship and and what it was like, you know, being on um, the Nor Norwegian Jewel for a week. Uh, my wife's aunt and uncle were actually on it for two weeks. They were on for a week before we got on, so they really enjoyed the cruise. Oh, by the way, check this out. And how sweet was that? I just um, man, and, and they did a good job. They weren't uh, they weren't taking shortcuts on there, and they they kind of knew the whole song. And here's a little sunset for you that we saw on the cruise. And I just thought this was nice. And I thought I would put up uh, just a few bits of video of things we saw from from our balcony. And we actually saw several cruise ships that would stay parallel with us or kind of behind us. And I thought that was pretty cool. And look at this guy. Yeah, he was he was behind our ship, I think at one of the stops. I can't remember which one off the top of my head at the moment. And, and we would see uh, we would see several other guys like him on this trip. And here's oh yeah, here's another playful little video. And some of these, you know, I was kind of zooming out a little bit. We were obviously in port somewhere, but I saw this. Hey, what's that? Yeah, and he's just having a good old time. I will say that I did see some whales, but when it comes to whale watching, you kind of catch them, and then you kind of don't. You sort of see them, and it's by the time you get your camera out, it's too late. And I, I did see one kind of, um, kind of out, out of my peripheral to the left as I was looking straight ahead. I mean, he did one of those big corkscrew jumps in the air. It was amazing. And by the time I got my camera, well, that was that. Oh, and watch these guys. There's uh, three or four of them here. But yeah, we saw a lot. We saw a lot of critters in the ocean, including whales. I did get some good video of a killer whale on the ferry from um, from Vancouver over to Vancouver Island seven or eight years ago. I can't remember if I've put it up on YouTube or not. But I mean, it's just a few seconds. Uh, I did get them on video though, and it was amazing seeing one of those, you know, not at SeaWorld, but out in the ocean. And this uh, this video got me pretty excited. We're moving, and well, just just watch this and and watch it uh, big if you can. I've actually labeled this in one of my files my Loch Ness monster video. I totally get how you know sailors back in the day could have misidentified actual creatures as monsters. Watch this video for me though if, if uh, I've actually got a little debate going on with a couple of friends about what this is. At first I thought, oh it's clearly this. And later on it's um, well it's either, it's three. There's three and I think at one point even four of something. And I'll say um, among the arguments, uh, there's definitely dolphins, there's definitely whales. I'm not real sure. Let me know what you think. If you have any thoughts, I would love to hear from anybody else. But I got very excited filming this. I, uh, and as you can see, it's, it was uh, off in the distance, kind of hard to zoom in. But let me know what you think about this one. And, uh, you know, as someone who likes to watch the ocean when I'm on a ship, uh, you know, you get those... Uh, white caps, you get the waves moving. It's easy to think you're seeing something when you're not, but uh, but this was pretty cool. And, and I know a, a couple of mornings on the ship, you know, I'd, I'd go out and look and, you know, I, maybe I, I had just missed a whale sighting, but, but I definitely saw them on this cruise. I don't know why people go on whale watching excursions when you're on a cruise like this, because you're, you're going to see them. And this was in the Haven area. Uh, they had a little hot tub area. Uh, when we were looking at the glaciers, 
we had access to the very top of the ship. And this was very special. I mean, this to me was just a lot of fun being up here and getting this kind of um, view as we were traveling. And I just thought uh, this, this was a lot of fun. And they were serving hot chocolate up here too, which I thought was great. We went to two different glaciers. One of them, the weather got really bad. And the captain actually pulled out. Oh yeah, they're bringing us hot chocolate. And this was good stuff too. This wasn't uh, instant or anything. These were delicious hot chocolates. But yeah, one of the the weather was so bad that the captain uh, pulled out, and he he actually did a Q and A a couple of days later. And somebody asked him about why he decided to pull out, and he gave a great answer. You know, he explained that it was dangerous. Another ship was in there before us, and they were having trouble. And he did not want to risk anything. But this is the glacier we did get to go to and we did get to see. And I believe the, the weather was a little rough in the morning, but as the day went on, things kind of calmed down and we were able to make it to this one. And, uh, you know, it's the glaciers are so foreign to me. It, it was very exciting just checking this out. The, um, every morning, our concierge would give us, well, actually the night before, a little uh, paper write-up on where we were going and what what it was about. Check out that view, I just love that view. And this was from um, one of the Haven rooms with my wife's aunt and uncle. And there's that's about as close as we got to it. And that was just, uh, just a great view in my books. And this is in Holcomb Bay. And we were at Endicott Arm. And it's 40 miles long and ends at the Dawes Glacier an actively calving and receding tidewater glacier. And it goes on, there's more information. But, you know, it was just so fun getting there. And the ship, of course, turned several times. We got several really good looks at it. And here's another ship that we saw. And this was as we were leaving. I'm not, I'm not sure which area, but we, we got to see them untie the ship a couple of times. And, and I thought that was pretty cool. This is this is right off of our balcony. This was our view. And, yeah, just fascinating. You know, watching uh, how things work on a cruise ship. And before I ended this video, I just wanted to mention a couple of books I read to get ready for this trip. I read Murder at 40 Below by Tom Brennan. Uh, really interesting, uh, kind of various true crime cases that have happened in Alaska. And I read The Klondike Fever, The Life and Death of the Last Great Gold Rush by Pierre Burton. That one was written in 1955, and it's huge. It's about 450 pages. I read both of those books when we, when we planned our cruise the first time before COVID. And then uh, six months or so ago, I went back and reread them. I wasn't going to reread the 450-page uh, book, but I was so in a, a you know Yukon gold rush Alaska mentality I went back and read it again and it's worth reading twice love these nighttime views of other cruise ships near us uh, you know um, I would go to sleep we would leave the blinds open and have the ocean right outside and if I got up through the night I'd always look out and see if I could see a boat and frequently I could and there's just something kind of um, Kind of ghostly, it, you know, and it was you kind of had that fog and smoky look all over Alaska quite a bit. The rainy weather, you just sometimes it felt a little not quite Stephen Kingish, but there there was uh, yeah sometimes a little bit of a X Files Twilight Zone kind of feel, and I like that. You know, it uh, kind of almost makes you feel like hey, there's more out there. I saw a little island as we were going by. This was uh, kind of in the buffet area. If you wanted to come out and eat your uh, meals out on the back of the ship, you could. That, that was actually just over our room. And this was us coming into Vancouver. And unfortunately, I didn't quite get us going under the bridge. But I, I got us um, shortly after we went under. And Vancouver was a very attractive city. We would end up spending about four days in Vancouver at the end of our cruise. Our, our cruise actually ended in Vancouver. And it is such a... Yeah, I'll go on record saying that it's one of my favorite big cities. I love Indianapolis. I love Pittsburgh. Vancouver to me, you know, with a couple of exceptions. Never know it. Beautiful. 
put the plan to when the rain set in. And I would have liked to know you when I was just a kid. You're down to learn out long before your legend never did. Leo um, on Ship Entertainment. He did a um, he did a whole Elton John set, which was interesting, kind of country western. And he did he did do Crocodile Rock and Benny and the Jets, and those are two songs I can go the rest of my life with never hearing again. And he left out Rocket Man and Yellow Brick Road, but it was still a good set. And this was uh, in Skagway uh, the the video I just showed you a moment ago was where a recent rock slide happened which has kind of messed up some of the excursions and the ability of some of the cruise ships to get into town. In fact that cruise ship there, they were ferrying passengers. You see the little boats there? They were uh, taking them back and forth with smaller boats. And uh, yeah, a little more on the restaurants. Just wanted to let you see some of the beautiful, you know, that, that's just a nice restaurant period. I also, also wanted to mention that, uh, you know, we did another cruise six or seven years ago. And this was a different Norwegian ship, but it um, if you wouldn't have told me that it was a different ship, I, I would have thought it was the exact same one. Set up exactly the same as uh, another similar size ship we'd been on before. And that that, uh, that was Chin Chin Restaurant, and that's the Chin Chin Menu, uh, kind of their Asian restaurant on the ship. And I wanted to put up a quick video or a little info on, on Chin Chin, because it was delicious. And that uh, sweet and sour soup, some spring rolls, really hit the spot. This is probably one of the more popular restaurants on the ship. And since we had Guillen, our concierge, he uh, he helped us make sure we got in when we wanted to. It's, it's kind of, sometimes you have to wait to get into Chin Chin. But that was probably one of our more favorite restaurants for dinner on the cruise. I thought I would go ahead and mention that we like this cruise so much. Yeah, we've already started planning to do another Alaskan cruise in a couple of years. And possibly even, uh, you know, we like Seward and Anchorage enough that we thought we might even fly up there. You know, maybe just for a week when we're not taking a cruise. They had this beautiful atrium too. I loved this. They had that little Starbucks at the front and here was kind of a little help area. Yeah, some other places where you could buy excursion tickets. The, the little faux Starbucks, the, the people working there were very sweet. And, you know, the, of course you had coffee in your room, but a couple times we just sat in this atrium and enjoyed coffee. At night, the lights up in the ceiling would change colors, kind of like a rainbow. And it, uh, that was really, it was, it was really pretty, and it really added to the atmosphere. But several, several afternoons and evenings, maybe after an excursion, we would just come and, and sit here. But uh, yeah, it was very relaxing. You could still see, you know, you could people watch, but it wasn't too crowded. And over on that staircase over there, people, uh, if you wanted to do a photo session with one of their photographers, you could. My wife's aunt and uncle actually live in Michigan, and we wanted to do a quick family photo, so we did it over there. I mentioned our concierge, Guillen. He was incredible, and he jumped into one of our family photos, and it uh, we, we actually purchased one before the cruise was over. This was uh, the entertainment for a couple of nights was J.P. Parent. He's a comedian magician. You actually see him standing over there. Look at him. He's kind of creepy. He's uh, actually scoping the place out before his show. He is brilliant. Look him up. I mean, you know, usually cruises have a standard magician or a standard comedian. He's been on Penn & Teller. He fooled them. I love Penn & Teller. And then at his show, I mean, he would insult the audience. He was a little bit evil. And I, uh, I appreciated that. It was just funny. Here, here's some of the, the buffet area. I mentioned it. They still did a good job. And I took a few pictures and some video. I should have given you a trigger warning. There's some ham. Um... Kind of Texas Chainsaw Massacre looking ham. He smelled good though. I didn't need any of them. And they did some really artsy things with some watermelon and some other foods. 
that I, I was impressed with. I, I didn't want to eat it. It looked so nice. Uh, how cute is that? Anyway, I had to take some pictures. It was uh, just an interesting display. And, of course, you have all sorts of different ethnicities on the cruise ship. I'm sure that would explain our friend Mr. Ham on a previous picture. But, uh, yeah, but it was real happening up here. Oh, and, and we'll end with this. Uh, Norwegian cruises, they sometimes do the towel art in your room. It's almost like having a little stuffed animal. There was an elephant. And our steward, um, Ivan, made uh, made these for us every night. I mentioned to him how much I appreciated that. It was so sweet. So every night there was one in our room. There was a monkey. And we ended up putting them, yeah, we put them on our little table. And uh, there they were at the end of the cruise, just hanging around. I hated to leave them. But, I, you know, I didn't want to steal Norwegian towels. They'd been good to us. But, uh, but yeah, I wanted to end with that. And there's, yeah, there's Ivan with his uh, towel art. We, uh, we loved him. We wanted to take him home with us. But we couldn't. But we had a great cruise, thanks to, to Norwegian.